In today's video, I'm gonna show you my top four hip strength and stability exercises that I use with athletes dealing with hip pain. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today again is all about hip pain strength and stability exercises. We're gonna go through the side plank clamshell, the single leg kick out to the side, the unassisted hip airplane, in a slow tempo banded squat. So first, let's go through the side plank clamshell. Now, a clamshell is a very simple exercise that a lot of rehab practitioners will use that it's not bad, but it's also very, very basic. So for most people, they will lay on their side like this and the clamshell is just opening, holding for a couple seconds and back down. We're only working these upside, top side muscles right here. Now, again, we always try to aim to make our exercises functional, make sure that they relate as much as possible to other movements that we do throughout the day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna progress the regular side clamshell to a side plank clamshell. You're gonna come up onto the knee, open the hip, hold it for five seconds, then drop the knee down, drop the hip down. What you're gonna notice is the side plank clamshell is a lot harder. First off, you're gonna feel this downside hip working extremely hard. That's because that hip is not just working to move the hip, but to stabilize the hip. Again, we're understanding the difference between strength and stability. Strength is just the ability to move the hip, to create muscle tension and to create movement. Stability is your ability to limit excessive or unwanted motion, so to control position. So that downside hip has to keep my hip up to be able to make sure that I don't drop back down. Similar in the fact is if I was doing a squat and I don't want knee cave, a lot of times it's because those lateral hip muscles need to work to control the position of the knee. So the side plank clamshell is an excellent way to bring more strength and stability to the hip. Again, with a lot of my patients, I would do this on both sides. Coming up, hold for five seconds, down and back. And I would do probably 10 reps on each side. Now that we're done with that, we're gonna move to the next movement, which is a single leg kick out to the side. Now, the scientific term for this is unilateral abduction. We don't need to use that fancy terminology here. We're just gonna use single leg kick out to the side. You're just gonna take a smaller band. The first one was the uh, slingshot by Mark Bell. If you were doing this up here, the band would be on the knees. If you try to put it down to your ankles, it would be a little too difficult because it wouldn't expand as much. So we're gonna use a smaller version that has a little bit more elasticity to it. From right here, what we're gonna do is first create a good stable foot position. So toe into the ground, spread your feet out. You're gonna create a good stable arch, little bit of a squat. From here, you're gonna kick out and back. Now, while you're kicking like this, you wanna make sure a few things are happening. First, my trunk all the way down is staying in line. I don't wanna to lean to the side. These lateral hip muscles have a job of keeping my pelvis level, keeping my knee from not rotating in, and also keeping my trunk from not leaning side to side. So from here, we're going to hinge back and see myself in direct alignment. Now start the kicks. So even though this is a kicking exercise, it's all about the stance leg. And in fact, you will feel this working really good right in this area because these are the muscles again that are controlling everything. From the side view, standing tall, single leg, hips back, chest forward, hinge. Then start your kicks. You're gonna do 10 to 15 repetitions. And again, you should be feeling this lateral hip working really well. Two to three sets on each side. So again, get on the left foot now. Hinge, kick out to the side and back. As you fatigue, a couple things will usually happen. The knee will wanna waver in, the trunk will wanna to lead to the side, don't let those happen. If you have very poor control at the start, you can use something to stabilize yourself. So a small hinge, kicking out to the side and back. A lot of people who develop hip pain, specifically on the front and the sides, deal with problems in control through that lateral hip. So this is an excellent exercise and improving that single leg strength and stability. Next, what we're gonna do is go to an 
unassisted hip airplane. This is an exercise I first learned from Dr. Stuart McGill. And the idea is that we work on controlling your hip through a rotational plane of motion, something that he would call steering your strength. Now, in many of the movements that we do in the gym, they're in one or two planes of motion. We're either going straight up and down with a squat, or maybe going side to side with a lateral lunge, but there's very minimal exercises that actually work on the rotational plane of motion of the hip. That's where the hip airplane comes in. So it allows us to uncover, expose, and fix a lot of issues that we have in that rotational component to our movement capabilities at the hip that can allow us to fix a lot of causes of hip pain. So this is what the hip airplane looks like. You're gonna start in single leg stance, little bit of a bend in the knee. Back leg is gonna be completely straight. Squeeze your glute, and from here, you're gonna tip forward at the hip, like you're doing a single leg RDL. From here, you're gonna rotate up, rotate back, drop down, and back up. From this view, again, grab the ground with the feet, knee in line, hinge over. Notice how my knee's still in line with my foot. As I rotate up, I'm moving only about the hip joint. Don't let that knee move. So you don't wanna come up and let that foot collapse over. So keep that knee in line, just move about the hip. As far as you can, hold it, back down, hold. Drop the hip, feel a good stretch in the lateral hip, come back up. What we're doing is working that lateral hip musculature again through that rotational plane of motion. In this way, we're concentrically squeezing, shortening those muscles to pull the hip open, and then we drop eccentrically lengthening those lateral hip muscles to allow us to drop the pelvis down into this position. So that is the unassisted hip airplane. We would do <clears throat> two to three sets of 10 repetitions on each side. Now, how can you progress that? What we're gonna do is add a band. This is called RNT, or reactive neuromuscular training. You're gonna grab, grab a band and place it just above the knee joint. In this position, the band is attempting to pull my knee out to the side, to turn my foot on its side. So what do we have to do? This foot has to be jammed down, keep that foot engaged to the ground. And then from there, all the way up, we're gonna maintain that stability as we then go through the full airplane again. So we'll start locked out. We're gonna hinge, control. We're then going to open the hip, couple inches, hold. Notice how my knee's directly in line. I'm then going to drop down. I'm going to drop the pelvis till I feel a good stretch and then back up. One more time, open, down, drop the pelvis, back up, all the way up, all the way through. Now, something like this. Again, when you get done, you should feel those muscles working really hard. That's how you know that this exercise is being done at the intensity that's right for you. So we've gone through three exercises so far. My last exercise that I love doing for, again, for strength and stability emphasis at the hip for people dealing with hip pain is a slow tempo squat. What you're going to do is grab your hip circle band. You're gonna put this just above the knees <clears throat> and you're gonna perform with your standard squat technique, a very slow tempo squat to a position that is pain-free. Now, here's two examples. I will get people sometimes that as they squat down, they will get a pinching pain in the front of their hip, or they'll get lateral hip pain, sort of that greater trochanteric bursitis. What we wanna do is go just above that area and hold for a couple seconds. Feel those lateral hip muscles turning on to pull the femur into a good position. You're gonna hold for a couple seconds, sometimes 10 to 20 seconds, and then come all the way back up. And your goal is to progressively lower down further and further. So here's what it's gonna look like. From here, we're going to get <clears throat> our hips back. We're going to slowly descend down. In this position, the band pulling out to the side, my lateral glutes are being engaged to a greater degree than without the band. Let's say right there I can feel hip pain. I'm going to go directly above it and hold for 20 seconds, driving my hips out to the side against the band resistance, feeling those lateral hip muscles turning on like crazy. 20 seconds, 
and then I'll stand back up. In this position, it should be very difficult for you to maintain because of the fatigue within those lateral hip muscles. Come back up. Eventually, as you go through, you should be able to work yourself further and further down into a deeper position without that hip pain until you can get all the way down into your full depth squat. So guys, that is it for today's video. There's four exercises that can be very helpful in improving your hip strength and stability, specifically for those dealing with hip pain that need that specific emphasis. Now, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. And if there's any injuries that you're dealing with that you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know as well. Until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes so i pay no mind why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos these people live